Hello, welcome to 3 Minute Medic. This is Sean Hulsman, paramedic education guy, and we'll talk about a little science today. Why don't we push sodium bicarbonate and calcium chloride through an IV together? Something we've learned a long time ago in paramedic school, and uh, we'll talk about it. So, the reason we're doing this is because in the new collaborative protocols, you can see there is a specific hyperkalemia protocol, and if we suspect hyperkalemia, we have understanding orders, sodium bicarbonate and calcium chloride, one gram if need be. So, we can do that understanding orders. This also appears in another protocol in the collaborative, which is the cardiac arrest for V-fib and pulseless VTAC. Again, you can see under paramedic standing orders, we're able to push sodium bicarbonate and calcium chloride. So I thought it'd be a good time to review exactly why we don't do this, uh, push it in the same line, and we'll go over this. So here is a video. Uh, what I've got is some sodium bicarbonate. It is in a syringe, and I'm running that syringe into a water bottle. And uh, we'll fast forward through some of this, but what you're seeing in the bottom of the water bottle is a sodium bicarb. So I just got a little bit of sodium bicarb on the bottom there. And now we're going to run the calcium chloride through the same tubing. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is this white blanching there. That is the precipitate starting to take effect in the tubing itself. But as you look into the bottom here, this is the real problem. Right? This is the precipitate that comes out. It is calcium carbonate, which is a solid, and that precipitates out when these two aqueous liquids are mixed together. So in an IV, if you push them in the same IV, you're going to get this going on there. It looks kind of like a milky substance when you shake it up, but take a closer look in a smaller container, and what you'll see is some liquid, and suspended in that liquid are lots of little white solid particles of calcium carbonate. All right, this is stuff that would be pushed into the IV and this would go into your patient if you push both medications through the same IV. Now I took the liberty of using a coffee filter and I filtered out the water here and this was left over, this paste, uh, which would eventually get hard and crunchy. This is all calcium carbonate that's left over there and clearly we want to push that IV into anybody. All right, so here's the chemistry behind it. You uh, have a chemical equation here. So you have your calcium chloride plus your sodium bicarbonate, and that yields a couple things. This is going to yield your calcium carbonate, which is that solid precipitate that you saw there. It's going to yield uh, some uh, normal saline, which is a liquid form, and then you're going to have some water produced in that and some carbon dioxide. And if you quickly go through there and cancel everything out and balance your equation like you do in chemistry class, then you get a nice balance, and it is correct. So we have balance. Cool thing about calcium carbonate is this is called calcite and is also what makes up limestone. Right. Smart people tell you that IV limestone is bad for patient care. We don't want to push IV limestone into people. All right, a couple things can happen. You can get precipitate that can clog the tubing. You can also cause embolus with uh, those things. So how do we fix this? We flush the line with at least 50 milliliters of saline between sodium bicarb and calcium chloride administration. Or, if you have time and the resources, you initiate a second IV line and you use one line for each med only, and that will solve the problem. Thanks for watching 3 Minute Medic. This is Sean P. Halsman. You can get me at my email address, shulsman at tcaems.com. Be safe out there.